everybody. Good to see you guys and good to hear from everybody. Just gonna turn the music down a little bit. Can you guys uh, all hear me okay? Music's not too loud. If it is, just give me some feedback. Hey, Julian, what's going on? There is a little bit of a delay. It's a lot better than this morning. Uh, I had to turn the latency down. Um, because uh, this morning, my AP, we did the whole thing for like an hour with like a 30 second delay. It was kind of annoying. So uh, there's just a little bit of a delay, maybe two seconds. So not too bad. I'll take it. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Phil, what are you doing? Phil's giving us directions to bake something. Okay, great. Um, how's everybody doing? Let's hear from everybody. Um, what are, so two questions and type in all in as like one answer so that we don't have like a ton of um, comments going all up, you know, multiple lines, but um, in, in like two sentences at once, um, what are you doing to keep busy and not go crazy? And number two, are you sticking to a schedule like I said you should? Let's hear from you guys. I'll give you some time to respond. Again, the question is, what are you doing to stay busy and occupied? And number two, are you following some kind of daily schedule? Okay, we got Minecraft, video games, no. No, no, good, okay, sleeping. Okay, Edmund, you got partial schedule, that's good, that's good. Okay, Abigail, Abby, you play video games? What, what game do you play? Video game, man, a lot of video games. Okay, Jason's being productive around the house. You working on house projects, paint, your parents got you painting and fix some plumbing and things. Okay, yeah, 10 o'clock's not bad. I think if you're waking up before 9.30 or so or 10, that's pretty good. All right, you don't wanna, wanna be sleeping then too much. And then your day's gonna be get thrown off. Keep in mind guys, we're only like day four right now, so. Oh, day three, yeah, sorry. My wife's over there. Hey, Kenny, there he is. I had a feeling that you were the Trump guy. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I don't know, is that wrong? I don't know. I don't know many girls that do, so maybe that's just the circle that I'm in. But uh, hey, that's that's awesome. Uh, yeah, Christy, it, it's all good. You can just hang out with us. It's all good. All right, Zoe's up at 9.30. Good, good. All right, well, um, guys, if you're trying to find people to game with, you can, you guys can, uh, I'll leave this on for a little bit after you guys can, uh, you know, connect with each other then. Um, so it sounds like some of you guys are following a schedule and, and that's a good thing. Um, just from my own experience, so like on Monday, um, I was kind of like, we didn't know exactly how to set up a schedule yet. And so I kind of just, we kind of we were just being spontaneous and we um, kind of just did whatever we needed to do. Uh, I have definitely been staying busy. Like, you know, Monday I actually went into Mills and like picked up everything. I got my screen here, set up my laptop station, downloaded all the files I need. And then I was like, kind of working all day. Um, and my wife was like doing her thing. And by the end of the day, we both kind of felt like in a funk because we had basically, you know, we were eating at like ra really random times. I think we had like lunch at three and then dinner at like nine or something. And um, just our whole routine was really thrown off. Um, so, um, uh, so Monday night, we're like in a funk. And so we decided on Tuesday 
that uh, we're gonna make a schedule. So like I wrote a list of all the things I was gonna do. She wrote a list of all the things that she was gonna do. And then we like made a schedule. So we like, we're up at nine, we had breakfast together. And then we're like, okay, we're gonna work or do whatever we need to do until 12. And then we came back together to eat together. I think, I don't know about your families, but like I grew, you know, I grew up in a family where like when you eat together, that's a good time to connect and just like kind of ground yourself. So um, we kind of, I guess we kind of do play on our day around when our meals are. Um, and that can be a really good way to, to connect with your families and stuff. Um, guys, let's uh, let's not. Um, you guys can you guys can do your gaming stuff later. All right, let's. Um, yeah, can boys. <laughs> let's not talk about gaming stuff right now. All right, Ryan, Kenny, all you guys. Oh my gosh, you're ridiculous. Oh, thank you for an actual question. Jason's asking, when's the baby coming? Uh, our due date is in two weeks and two days. So uh, the time is ticking and it's been kind of crazy. We're, we're still excited, but it's, you know, obviously a crazy time to bring a baby into the world. And uh, so we really are trying to stay healthy um, and, you know, minimize like going out. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're going for walks and stuff. We're definitely keeping our distance. So, um, uh, when will we have to come back to school? You know, right now, the earliest date is after spring break, but we don't know uh, when, you know, the it's, it's kind of up to like how this whole thing goes. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about like the coronavirus and stuff and give you updates then. But uh, for now, the earliest return date is after spring break, uh, but by then I'll have my baby. So I'm not gonna be coming back. It'll be the sub uh, or we just, you know, do this online. Um, <laughs> Edward, you love that structure, and I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that about you. Um, you know, we can do this. Let's let's make let's let's kind of do this. Uh, the first part of this, let we can just do like kind of any questions you might have um, about schedules or school or just how I'm doing or how you're doing, and then um, then the second part will go into like some bio stuff and answer any questions you might have about uh, evolution and the lecture and activities. And then the last part, uh, I need to make sure the last like 10 minutes, I go over the assignment for tomorrow, okay? So that you guys know what to do. So uh, let's, I'm gonna scroll back up and answer some questions really quick, just kind of quick fire. So uh, when are we coming back to school? Don't know. Are we answering questions now? Yes. Have we figured out a name yet? Michael, we are down to two names. Um, they're still secret. We're gonna decide when we see him, so. Um, once we once he's born we'll have a name and you guys will maybe not right away but you'll certainly get an email with uh, an update on that uh when will you see me in person again um unfortunately if on a, in an official capacity assuming we come back for spring break i'm going to be gone until uh, basically finals week so i won't see you guys in person until the end of may but um you know if this like this uh what's it called live stream thing works out pretty well um you know and even if you guys go back to school i can always do some live streams just to say hi um it's been good for me because you know i'm a pretty social person it's been kind of hard to to not you know go visit with friends and hang out and stuff so uh do we wear masks when i go out you know we i, I didn't really but i think that um now we, especially as we're getting closer to have, having a baby and we're also like seeing the numbers of, of cases go up. I think like earlier in the week, it was like 20 in San Mateo County. And the last I checked, it was like 80. Uh, this morning it was 80 cases. So we are still very much on the uprise um, where it's just gonna get more and more and more. So, you know, I'm, we're definitely keeping our distance. We're not going out unless we absolutely have to. But, um, but for example, like two days ago, we had a doctor's appointment to like check up on the baby and stuff. So we did wear masks when we went out. Um, and you know, it, yeah. So we, ha we, I have some left over from like when the, when the fires are coming through. So we're wearing them. A big thing guys, I, I heard, you know, this is kind of anecdotal, but I heard like one of the big places where a lot of people were spreading it. It's all, again, it's all contact stuff. And, and it's areas you don't think of, right? Everyone knows like door handles and light switches. Like those are, high points of contact, but um, if you're pumping gas uh, at the gas station, or if you're going shopping and you're pushing the grocery cart, those are all areas where like people are coughing and touching things. So uh, you definitely, you know, if you have like disinfectant wipes, you can be cleaning, you know, even out, out you know, bring some with you and, 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 uh, and 
clean up as you go out there. Um, and if you don't have any, you can actually use a little bit of bleach. So you can do like a tablespoon of bleach with a quart of water and dilute it, put it in a little spray bottle. We've been using that to kind of sterilize and keep our kitchen and our dining area clean. Um, because again, you don't really want the microbes on your hands getting into your mouth while you're eating. Okay, and that's why we're not trying not to, to touch our face. Uh, is the sub chill? Yeah, she's really nice. Uh, I mean, again, if you guys don't come back to school right away, you're not gonna meet her. You'll probably meet her like on YouTube before you meet her. Uh, in person. Um, are we writing stuff down? Uh, not today, but um, you know, for the screencasts, like the one on speciation, you guys should have taken notes down with that. I hope I was clear on that in the video. Um, I'll always try to let you know if you need to be taking notes or something, okay? Um, if the school, uh, Marjona's asking if the school closes for the whole year, what happens with finals? There's so much we don't know, Marjona, right now. Uh, it kind of all depends on how this goes, you know? Uh, this is a total, a totally new thing. You know, like we're on a pandemic, right? Like this is a disease for the whole world right now. So um, as much as we wanna keep things normal for you guys, it's also, you know, we're gonna to have to let some things go. Um, and so I don't, I don't know how things are gonna go with finals or getting your units or anything. Like everyone's kind of figuring this out as we go. Cause as far as I know, nobody's ever, nobody in our generation has ever gone through this yet. Um, let's see, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. Oh, shoot, I'm way behind. There's a lot of comments. Okay, so was there an assignment for yesterday? Yes, the assignment, um, Christy, for yesterday, What you can see this on uh, the Canvas site. And actually, I'll go ahead and show you guys this since you're asking. Um, over here, this is our Canvas site. If you haven't seen this yet, um, everything you need to know is on here. Uh, not everything's linked yet. Not everything's been uploaded. But if you click on Home, um, that'll take you to this page here um, and you can just scroll down. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see um, the schedule for every day. So yesterday, um, this is us today, Thursday, but for yesterday you were supposed to download, you don't need to print out, but just download the one species or two packet and then you were just uh, um, deciding, you know, writing a little paragraph for each of the examples of whether they're not they're the same species or different species. Uh, you do not need to do the the those analysis questions at the end unless you really want to okay so that was the assignment um let's see assignment nine was one species or two so i made a mistake with the assignment numbers um and uh so the frog lab was actually assignment eight which means that the speciation lecture notes are assignment nine and then one species or two is assignment ten so i've updated on the site you can see now that all the assignment numbers are correct and then the point values are all there okay uh edward yeah italy's really bad man they they have more officially more deaths than china does um partly because they have a lot more older people there but um italy is a, a class is now the case study of like what not to do and unfortunately when you compare the countries that have done a good job of like slowing down coronavirus and flattening that curve i was telling you about uh when you look at taiwan or like south korea uh, and you compare that to the other countries, like we're trying to figure out, does the US look more like, uh, you know, um, Taiwan or South Korea, or does it look more like Italy? And unfortunately, we look more like Italy right now. So uh, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets a lot better. And that's why it's so important you guys uh, stick to the, the social distancing stuff, that you don't go out of the house unless you really have to. And if you do, that you're keeping minimum distances and that you're like washing your hands uh, you know, as soon as you get home or any chance you get really, um, you know, my wife's, you know, she's a nurse. So they're like, they work in sterile environments all the time. And she's even having me, like, if I go out to the grocery store or whatever, or, um, you know, we need to buy something like she'll make me like change my clothes and then we'll wash the clothes right away just to keep the, the bacteria away or the virus away. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Kenny, please don't cheat. Uh, so yeah, Kenny, you're kind of behind, man. You may want to check in with somebody. Okay, a lot of people here willing to help you out. Uh, you want the seniors? Are they going to be able to graduate? A lot of graduations are getting canceled. It's a big bummer for a lot of the seniors. But proms getting canceled, uh, not not officially for Mills, but in other other states or districts, uh, graduations and proms and all the senior events are getting canceled, which really sucks. Uh, if that happens, I I'm gonna I'll try to I want to do something for them online. So. Um, let's see, Frog 
with this packet. How many points is the frog assignment? That's 15 points. Uh, frog genetics is assignment eight. Yes. Um, oh, so, okay. So the frog, Edmund, frog assignment is, is, the frog activity is assignment number eight and it's worth 15 points. Sorry, I'm like just catching up here. Uh, Jaden, we do have a quiz on Monday. Um, it's going to be on Canvas. And I'm really, it, you know, here, here's the thing that you guys got to remember, right? We talked about like doing things for learning and not for a grade. Um, the quiz is mandatory. You have to take it and I will give you points for doing it. But um, I'm not, I'm probably going to lean away from like giving you a grade based on the quiz itself. Does that make sense? Because um, if I make it worth too much, people are just going to cheat. I don't really want that. So um, it's more of a way for you to check in with yourself and also for me to see like what you guys are learning and what you remember. Um, so there's kind of two ways you can do it. If you want to take the quiz and use your notes, you can do that. There's no way I can check. And, you know, even then, if you have a question on the quiz, you don't know, and you find the answer and you answer it correctly, then you've kind of learned it, right? Uh, instead of just like picking a random answer. So if you need to use the notebook, go ahead and do it. Um, if you feel like, hey, I'm learning this stuff. I, I think I can know it. I, I can do well on it. Just challenge yourself and take the quiz without the notebook. You're not going to get penalized for it. Okay. Uh, I do not watch All American. And um, Edward, I heard there are a lot of deaths even in the rich part of Italy where they make Ferraris and stuff. Yeah, you know, this, I mean, diseases do not discriminate based on uh, your wealth. So, you know, anybody that's exposed is, is going to be able to get it. Uh, it's not quite the same for the quality of care. Obviously, more the people with more money, they can get more, uh, uh, maybe have better access to it, which is really um, fair but uh yeah the, the the death is kind of affecting everybody okay um Kroosh, assignment number three i don't even know which one that is at this point man so yeah if you could text somebody they could they could get that too any other questions that you guys have for me before we get into the bio stuff some point she's uh she doesn't love being on camera so uh, but maybe maybe at some point she'll chime in and say hi um yeah there's some jazzy there are some plans to give money to people that need it i think that's really important oh assignment three is a question on science and faith yeah, Karosh, send me an email. Um, I might have that PowerPoint, actually. I think I do have it. Yeah, Karosh, send me an email, and I'll send you the PowerPoint, and you can just get the questions for, for assignment number three, okay? Um, yeah, I think, uh, Edward, we can go ahead and start moving into uh, the, um, what's it called? <laughs> the screencast from the other day. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, I thought I had it open. Here it is. Um, so we're going to just kind of open up for questions. If you have any questions about assignment, this should actually be, uh, nine, uh, and then that leads into assignment 10. So let's kind of do it in that order. If you have a question about this, um, screencast that I did, if there's anything that doesn't make sense, uh, just ask me and we can go over it. And then once people have that, um, Jazzy, just, e uh, yeah, email me. I'll, I'll send it to both of you guys. That's fine. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, any questions on this uh, speciation lecture? And by the way, if you have your notebooks and you did take notes the other day, go ahead and, and get your notebooks out just so you can kind of look off of it. There is one thing I, I kind of missed on the lecture, so we can add that back in. But uh, it'd be helpful right now if you want to go run and grab your, your bio notebook. Um, just also let you guys know, timing-wise, um, I'm going to cut this off at about 1.20 because uh, seventh period is going to be coming in at 2.30. So I want to kind of reset everything and get it ready for them. Okay, any questions? Any questions? There's 32 of you. Anybody have questions about the uh, screencast from the other day? 
Okay, there it is. Thank you, Ryan. We got our first question. Um, yeah, so comedic isolation. You actually like found it. That's the one part that I actually missed a slide on. Um, I don't know if I was just rushing to finish or I, I didn't get through it. So let's talk about that. Uh, let me switch over back to the PowerPoint here. Uh, here. Okay, so um, uh, Jaden, you didn't have to draw the pictures, but some people, like last period, you were saying they actually sketched out this this diagram. You know, if you want it, if it if it's helpful for you to review and also just to have that in your notebook, it's a good diagram to have. Um, and again, this this actually should just be like one long strip all the way. It's it's continuous. It just didn't fit on the screen, so it kind of got chopped. Okay. Um, so if you look at this, um, first thing everybody should understand is prezygotic versus postzygotic, right? So here you have fertilization. That is when the sperm and egg come together and they make the zygote. So up to that point, everything that comes before that, those are the prezygotic barriers, and then everything after the point that zy the zygote forms is the postzygotic barrier. Uh, and so Ryan, your question is gametic isolation. Um, in my slide, if I kind of uh, skip ahead here, the last one that I left off was uh, left off on was uh, mechanical isolation, uh, where the parts don't fit. But between that and the actual formation of the zygote, there's one more barrier that I forgot to make a slide on, and that is gametic isolation. And if we look at our um, picture here, that is this step right here. So gametic isolation is um, when there's a lack of compatibility uh, between the sperm and the egg, okay? So let's say you have two individuals, uh, they, they're in the same place, they mate at the same time, they have the same mating behavior, the parts fit, they mate, and the sperm is released, but the sperm is swimming up to the egg. Um, if the sperm and egg don't aren't compatible, uh, then fertilization can't happen and the zygote doesn't form. Okay. Now, why might that happen? There's a couple different ways that this can happen. One is cells communicate using proteins on, on the surface of their membrane. So um, the sperm's going to have certain proteins as it's swimming towards the egg. The egg's going to have certain proteins, and they have to kind of match up exactly for that sperm to be able to come into the uh, to the egg. Okay. Um, and uh, Edward, yeah, you don't you don't have to add this. You know, it's it's totally up to you. I mean, maybe you can put it on the side or something, but. Um, totally up to you. Um, so if the sperm can't get into the egg, it's not going to fertilize and you're not going to get the zygote. That's comedic isolation. Uh, another level of that though is maybe, let's say the sperm can get into the egg, right? Well, remember the sperm's got, in humans, the sperm's got 23 chromosomes, the egg's got 23 chromosomes. But if we're mating with another species that has a different number of chromosomes, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but I feel like gorillas or chimpanzees, they either have one more or one less than us. So if human sperm and, and a gorilla or a chimp egg come together, the chromosome numbers don't match up, the genes don't match up, and they, um, <laughs> yeah, I can't, you guys can eat all you want, I don't care. I've got pancakes over here and coffee too. Uh, but if the chromosomes don't match up, then uh, there's, a, there's a, uh, a lack of compatibility there, and that zygote doesn't officially form and become viable. It's not gonna be able to survive, so that egg just dies off. Right? So if that all happens, uh, that's that's what falls into comedic isolation. And only when you move past that do you actually get fertilization and the formation of the zygote. And um, and then we just have the last, you know, the, the post-zygotic barriers that we have to face. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, who was that again that asked that? It was Ryan. Okay, so thanks for that question, Ryan. I hope it makes sense. Um, let's see. Nathaniel, the frog packet. Yeah, if you could just fold that in half, you can either glue it or staple it. I don't really care. Uh, Andrew, the phylogenetic tree. Um, yeah, if you want to copy it in there into your notes, you can, but I'm actually going to be having you guys make a tree for your assignment tomorrow. So, you know, you'll have a tree there. So I would say you don't, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on this lesson? Give you guys, uh, you know, 10, 20 seconds to ask anything. Fifteen points, Nathaniel. Oh, you and tell your parents I said thanks a lot. It's really nice of them. Send that email and the, the gift. Appreciate it.
yeah, Christy, um, at some point, I mean, if we get back, if we end up getting back together, yeah, we're going to check all this off. Uh, I'm not even thinking about what happens if we don't get back. So I, if I were you, I would keep up with this. So Charlie, yeah, definitely keep up with it. Okay. Uh, Andrew, that's a good question. Why does uh, part of the tree have dots and the others don't? Um, let's look at that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they did it that way. Um, I feel like there was other, something else labeled that maybe got taken out of this picture. Um, but uh, the most important thing here is whether there's dots or not, that you just understand that anytime you have a branch point right there, that shows the divergence, right? So for example, sp species A and B share a common ancestor right here, but they also share a common ancestor with C and D at this spot down here, okay? Um, actually, I can change my pointer. Right. Ooh, laser. Yeah, so what else? Uh, just a laser pointer. Okay. Is that better? You guys like that? <laughs> so uh, yeah, so these are these are all branch points. Um, right here, there's another one right here, there's another one right here, um, another one up here as well. So if, if, if one or more species share a branch point, that means they have a common ancestor. And then obviously the further to the left of the branch point, uh, to the left of the tree, the branch point is, the older that common ancestor. trick on streams, it's Alt F4. I don't even know what that does, but... Okay. And I guess there's people that are not in this class. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that are not in this class. All right, you guys are you guys are all welcome to, to join in here. That's all good, um, but... Uh, I'm gonna ask that you guys keep help us stay on topic here. Are there any other questions um, for this lecture before I move into the actual assignment 10? I didn't really get any questions. So okay, let's go ahead and do that then. Um, if you if you think of something, um, let's go ahead and look at this one here. <laughs> oh my god, this is getting too crazy. Can I, can I kick people out? I wonder. I, I gotta figure out how I can ban people. Let's see. Who should I start with? <laughs> oh, I can remove people. All right. I've got ban privileges, guys. Don't make me use it. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. Let's move into the um, activity for yesterday. This is, um, let's see, is it working? Oh, there we go, there's a little blank. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of these examples? All right, um, Edward, really good question. So the question is, uh, if two organisms don't mate naturally in the wild, but then they are the same species, if they can mate, but just don't do it naturally. Like wolves and dogs can mate and have successful viable and fertile offspring, but they don't naturally do that because dogs live in houses, wolves live in the forest. So the question is, are they two different species? Uh, and Abby, I, I can, um, well, there aren't really clear answers with this. And this is what drives some people crazy. <laughs> I know some of you guys like really love an absolutely clear answer. Um, and this activity is written to be a little bit blurry. so. Um, that's uh, that's kind of how this is. So uh, I'll start with Edward with your question. Um, yeah, one of the things that you want to always consider is like, can this happen in nature, right? Because there are many of these examples um, where like in nature they do one thing and then if they like capture and bring these animals to the lab and they change the conditions, then they actually mate and, and the offspring can be viable and fertile. Um, and so what I would, you know, say is, uh, yeah, in, in general, it's a good rule of thumb to uh, to ask yourself, like, okay, in nature, would these two individuals come together 
and and get over all those barriers and uh, you know uh, be able to make make viable and fertile offspring. Okay, so um, yeah. Hey guys, can we let's let's stay on topic here because uh, I'm I'm trying to like look at the comment section to get actual questions and uh, I don't need all these side conversations. So uh, if this doesn't get better soon, I'm gonna start booting people. Um, and if I don't know who you are, like if I don't know if you, your name's not on there, I'm just gonna boot you, okay? So, um, cause it's kind of it's kind of distracting me from answering people's actual questions. So this is not an open forum. Um, who's the little cow? Um, so I don't know if that helps with your, your question. So like Edward, you're saying, how about orchids? Like if they made them in a lab, they would probably work, but not, in, not in the wild. So what that would mean, what I would say is that that means that they're two different species, right? Because if you think about like geographic isolation, for example, at the first level, um, in nature, if they're like the, the squirrels, for example, are on two separate sides of the Grand Canyon, um, they're not going to be able to mate even if they wanted to, because the river is blocking them and therefore they're two different species. If you captured them and brought them to the lab and now they can mate, um, that doesn't mean that the river is gone. So um, I hope that make, answers your question. It, it, you kind of have to ask yourself like what would happen in the wild, okay? Um, Abby, you asked, are we gonna go over all the answers? And the answer is, uh, I'm not I, I don't, I'm not gonna go through every single one. If there's a particular example that you had to question about, I can go over it. Uh, but like I said, there's not really a clear answer on all of these um, examples. Um, because uh, what I wanted to go out get after was to have you guys um, think about like how you make that decision are they one species or two and then like how do you back that up logically um, with, uh, with, with you know scientific knowledge and evidence um, so uh, Abby if there's a particular question I, I'm happy to go over any examples that you you want to talk through um, just just tell me which ones and we can go over it okay um, does that apply to selective breeding UN um, when you say selective breeding, you're you're talking about uh, like artificial selection. Um, I'm assuming so. Uh, that's probably yeah. That that would apply too in the sense that you know um, artificially we can like get. Uh, Justin here is asking about cats and tigers. I don't know about cats and tigers, but tigers and lions can certainly mate. But again, in nature, they would never run into each other because. Lions live in Africa and tigers live in Asia. So they're geographically isolated. Um, and so you want to answer your question, if we're doing, I think if you mean by selective breeding, you mean artificial selection, uh, then uh, yes, they would, they would still be different um, species. Okay. Uh, humans and ducks cannot mate. Um, Okay, yeah, so we got a question about um, example eight. So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and read this one out loud so everyone can, and you guys can see this too. Um, so it says copper is toxic to most plants. However, scientists observed a few plants that have developed a tolerance for copper. Uh, in other words, they don't, they, don't get, they don't die from it. So one type of plant has developed topper, tolerance to copper, and that's the yellow monkey flower. When scientists crossed copper tolerant plants with plants sensitive to copper, many of the hybrid plants were not able to survive. In early growth stages, their leaves turned yellow and they died soon after. So, uh, and I think that's it, right? Yeah, so in this case, um, you're asking Edward, it says it only goes over copper tolerant and trying to understand your question here it only if it, o it only goes over copper tolerant plants then non-copper tolerant and not copper resistant oh okay so copper resistant is the same thing as being tolerant okay so you're, if you're tolerant to something that means that it, you're not affected by it which also means that you're resistant so i think they're they made the mistake of using the, those two words interchangeably. they mean the same thing uh, are the owls two different species? What? That's number nine. So, uh, owls, northern spotted owls range from northwestern California to western Oregon, Washington, and Canada. Uh, California spotted owls are found in Sierra Nevada, northern and southern California. The ranges overlap in parts of northern California, and 
and observations and evidence suggest that when they come in contact, they're able to breed to provide to produce fertile offspring in a hybrid genetic makeup, but that hybridization is rare. Northern and uh, California spotted owls show some differences in appearance and genetics. Yeah, so this is, uh, uh, Abby, I would say that this is probably one of the more, the more blurry ones where it's kind of unclear. Um, my first instinct is to say like, well, they do generally live in different areas and they're not overlapping. So you could argue that they're geographically isolated. Um, it does though say that they can produce fertile offspring, um, but the hybridization is pretty rare. So, you know, this one's, uh, this one's kind of a toss up. You, this one we might, I would maybe say it's a maybe, okay? Uh, and I know that can be frustrating to those of you guys that love to have like really clear answers, but um, you wanna keep in mind that nature is not trying to follow human ways of categorizing things, right? What we're doing as scientists is we're looking at the natural world and we're trying to create definitions and boundaries and, and, uh, and compartmentalize it in a way that we can comprehend and understand that. And so many times in nature, and especially in biology, things are kind of blurry, so we don't have a clear answer. I hope that uh, makes sense. Uh, Andrew says, what about toads and frogs? Uh, I, from my knowledge, I mean, there's a lot of species of toads and a lot of species of frogs, but they're considered to be different species. It, again, it, um, yeah, I would, I would, I mean, toads and frogs are general words. So, you know, you, to, to get down to it, you'd have to find like a certain species of toad or a species of frog and see if they can mate. But um, I think just by making that distinction of toads and frogs, they, they may be different species. Okay. Um, so it says nothing about copper resistant plants. Yeah, Edward, the going back to the copper thing, um, all there's all they're saying here is uh, that the copper they mix copper tolerant plants, which are also we're just using them synonymously with copper resistant plants, and they mated them with ones that are sensitive to copper, meaning that they're they're affected that they're they can be killed or you know they they have a toxic reaction to copper. Um, so I, I can see where you're getting confused, but try not to get too caught up with the wording there. Um, so the answer is no. So the, oh, I see what you're saying, the species. Yeah, so uh, I think what they didn't say, but what they're trying to say is that, yeah, they're two separate species. Okay, you have the yellow monkey flower, which is tolerant. And then you have another version of a plant that is not resistant, not tolerant to copper. And they're, they're not, the hybrids are not able to survive. So the monkey flower and this other plant, which is unnamed, they're separate, uh, they're separate species. Um, people have created ligers already. Yeah. Okay. So that's, we've hit the bottom of the questions. Um, let's see, it's 2.13. So we gotta, we gotta start closing up soon. Um, are there any other questions on this actual assignment before I go over the stuff for tomorrow? to take notes if you're not in my class but you're welcome to what are lace wings uh let me show you it's, uh, probably i've seen them before it's an insect so they look like this this is a green lace wing right here Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, let's take a look at um, the assignment for tomorrow. And, um, and uh, let me switch over to that. So going, actually going back to the uh, Canvas page. So on your Canvas page for tomorrow, which is Friday, we made it to the end of the week, your assignment's gonna be assignment 11, uh, which is the carnivore trees. That's worth 10 points. And uh, what you need to do is download this worksheet. You do not need to print it out. I think you can just write everything down directly into your notebook. Um, and, uh, and I'll walk you through that in a sec. Andrew, you're asking since that bird failed, would he eat trying until he finds a mate? Yeah, basically. I mean, the, you know, the, the people that film the video, they're not filming every mating attempt. So hopefully for that little guy, he's, they, they'll just keep trying until they, they um, find somebody, okay? Um, 
Yeah, he's not necessarily going to keep pursuing the same female. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of individuals in that forest. So uh, he's going to do his best to keep, you know, he could maybe run into her again and try again. And she might, she might give him a chance or uh, he might have to find a different mate. Yeah, so um, it, last period for the worksheet, it said it was unauthorized. And I updated the link. So if you haven't reloaded the link yet, go to the top of the page click in the, the bar and just refresh the page. And the new page should have a updated link um, and, and then it should work. Okay. Uh, Croche assignment 10 is the one species or two uh, activity that we just finished talking about. So Abigail, let me know if refreshing helped because last period uh, we, we did a little troubleshooting Okay, uh, let's take a look at the activity. So um, what you're gonna be doing tomorrow is working on this activity, phylogenetics of carnivora. Um, good, I'm glad to see that it worked. And um, what we're gonna do is have you make a phylogenetic tree. So um, you can read up on this on your own, but basically what I've done is I've created this table. Uh, these are, it's not made up, this is all real. Uh, and if you're kind of familiar with how species are organized, every species is named by its genus and species. So uh, it's two words, uh, we're homo sapien, which means we're in genus homo species sapien. Uh, so I have on here um, a, a bunch of different mammals that all follow uh, fall in class mammalia, order carnivora. Okay, if you're not familiar with the, the, um, the uh, organization of, of the hierarchy, you can look that up, but it's, it's, uh, dom it's uh, domain, <laughs> uh, domain, kingdom, phylum, um, class, order, um, family, genus, and species. So that's kind of the general order. I had to say it out loud. It's I, The way I remember is um, dumb King Peter came over for a good soup. Okay, there's a mnemonic device there. So uh, what this shows, it doesn't show all of them, but um, this shows kind of the order of it. And basically the way you, it works is the further you get towards the right side, the more specific you're getting. Uh, and the further you get to the left side, the more inclusive it is. So all these species are members of class mammalia. All of them are, are members of order carnivora. Uh, but you can see that when we get to suborder, it starts to, we see our first split, our first branch, okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, you guys are asking about the printing it. So yeah, you don't have to print out the actual worksheet, but I do have pictures for you. You could just print out that part if you want. There's multiples, because I would normally print it out and then give it to four people. Uh, or if you want to feel artsy, you can uh, draw your own pictures yourself. Uh, but anyways, if you guys look closely here, you'll see the words filiformia and caniformia. Can anybody respond? I'll give you guys a few seconds, but what does this word remind you of? What does this word remind you of? And what hint might that give you of what some of these species might be? So what's filiformia and caniformia? Good guess. <laughs> California. Well, carnivora is already, we already said that here, right? But Charlie, you got it. Filiformia refers to the felines. Okay. And caniformia refers, uh, ref refers to canines. So if you think of felines and canines, we're kind of talking about the, the group of cat like animals and the dog like animals. Yeah. There you go. Some of you guys are getting it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of the first branch. And so when you make a tree, that's gonna be the first split that you're gonna have, right? Is you're gonna make a tree kind of like this and you'll see it split into, it's not exactly like the one we have here, but you'll you'll split into the, um, the filiformia uh, formia and the, the caniformia and then go up from there. Um, so you're gonna basically for your assignment, you're gonna take all this information and you're gonna be building a, uh, a, a uh, phylogenetic tree based on this. Um, now the order of how I want you to do this is this. The first thing you're gonna do is um, actually look up each species. I, I want you to know what they are, okay? They're all animals that you're probably familiar with, but you don't know them by their scientific name. So this is really easy. You're just gonna Google, you know, the name right there, Panthera tigris. That one's pretty easy, it's a tiger. And you're gonna write out what it is on that line. Uh, you could print this out and fill out the worksheet, or you could just write it directly into uh, the, the notebook. Um, Phil, you cannot use the bathroom and do not get water. Uh, um, and uh, let's see. 
Once you've done that, then you're gonna go onto uh, a full spread page or notebook. If you think you can fit it all on one page, you could try, but in my experience, it's better. It's best just to have two full pages. And you guys have plenty of, of uh, room in your, uh, uh, your notebook for this, right? So um, yeah, so what you're gonna do is create a phylogenetic tree. Now, phylogenetic trees come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, and just to kind of show you like through Google image, I just looked at phylogenetic tree. There's, you can have ones that are branched like this. You can have ones that are nice and organized like with boxes, but there are also ones that are, you know, here's a, a nice picture. It kind of shows three different uh, kinds. I don't know if it, you can see it, but some are, this is wacky. I don't really understand this circular one, but you can make any shape you want. Um, what I would recommend is look using the one at the top of this worksheet as a good guideline. You can see what they've done is on the left side, they kind of list out all the categories. So order, family, genus, species. You would do that with class, order, suborder, family, family, uh, super family, family, genus, and species. Kind of list that out and reserve uh, each row going horizontally, okay, across your page uh, for that. And then what you can do is start from the bottom with the most general, which is mammalia and carnivora. And then as you work your way to the top, you're gonna get the species at the very top. Also save a little room at the top of your page um, so that you can um, you can uh, glue in the picture that you printed out or you can sketch it in, okay? So that's gonna be assignment number 11. Um, that's gonna be your activity for tomorrow. Uh, again, the document is on there live, so you can go ahead and, and work on that today if you'd like. Uh, and then you don't have any homework over the weekend. Uh, we just, you know, when you come back on Monday, I'll have a link uh, right here to a, a quiz on Canvas. That's just gonna be a, a quick check for understanding. And again, you're just gonna be graded basically on completion, unless it looks like to me that you just went through and like clicked all the random, you know, you just clicked like A for all of them just to get it done and you failed it. Uh, unless, you know, unless you do that, I'm basically gonna give you full credit. Um, it's not really about the grade, it's more about, you know, getting feedback on how you, uh, whether you, you know the stuff or not. Okay. Uh, why are there photos of the same animals? Yeah. So Abby, the, this worksheet that I made that I made that, um, for myself to print out. And so when, if we were in, in class, I would print this out, make copies, and then I would have cut this into four pieces and give one piece to each person. So that's why there's duplicates. Okay. Uh, the blanks in the tables. Yeah. Uh, some of these animals don't have a super family, so they're, um, you can just skip that. So on your phylogenetic tree, you just draw a line directly through that group just go straight from suborder up to family, okay? Um, one more question for assignment 10. Fertility is unknown. That means that they don't know if they're, fer they're fertile or not, right? So they don't know if the offspring can have uh, kids or not. So that could be another that could be another piece of evidence or reasoning to, to say, hey, they're, they're, maybe they're not the members of the same species. Uh, lightning rays, you're saying can members of the same genus mate, even if they aren't the same species? That's a really good question. Um, you know, the, the, maybe the other way to look at it is because they've already been separated into two species. So for example, like Tigris and Onca are already separate species. We're assuming, uh, we're, we've already put them in the, that category because they're not able to mate. So to answer your question, just because they're in the same genus does not mean that they can, uh, they can mate and, and be members of the same species, okay? Um, hopefully it answers your question. So basically make the tree like the one shown. Yeah, yeah, so you make it make it like this. It's gonna be a lot bigger, right? This, this diagram, Abby, only includes four levels, order, family, genus, species. You guys are gonna include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven categories, these seven right here. Um, so you're gonna have like seven kind of going up the side, okay? Um, Edward, so one species or no? I would say uh, for number two, I'm just gonna clarify here. I think that's the one with the frogs, right? Yeah, uh, I would say they are not the same species. There's a lot going on here. One, they live in different geographic areas. Uh, there is a little overlap, but for the most part, they're separate. Number two, if they do uh, breed, we don't know the fertility. So until we can confirm that their offspring are fertile, we can't really say they're the same species. On top of that, the frogs in the second to last sentence, it also says that they select mates based on uh, different mating calls. So um, again, that's that's behavioral isolation. So there's a lot there to support the fact that they're they're not the same species. Okay, um, guys, thank you for all the questions and those of you guys that are not in the class and chiming in. I hope you got something out of it. 
uh, feel free to browse the rest of the channel. There's uh, other lectures that are gonna be posted. Uh, if you're really bored, my AP class is doing some really cool stuff right now with the human body. That stuff we don't actually cover in this class. So if you, you can watch the immune system video uh, uh, that's gonna go up tomorrow. We're gonna start going to communication and start talking about how the brain works, uh, how hormones work, uh, a lot of really cool things in the next two weeks there. So feel, feel free to um, check that out. Um, well, most of you guys are already here because you have subscribed, but uh, I guess it's not really a YouTube video until I say uh, this. So yeah, if you like what you're seeing, if you want to stay updated on the new videos, uh, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, leave a comment. Um, I the, um, the AP live stream is at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, but those are, those are also going to get posted too. Um, but the, the screencast, those are on all the time. So you can, you can check that. Okay. I got to shut this down to get ready for the next one. So, uh, I'm going to close out here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, uh, or leave a comment. I do see those and I'll check back. Uh, and then just to remind you from a Mills thing, uh, all the counselors and the wellness counselors, they're still working too. So if you are feeling like you need some support, especially being at home and not being around people or getting outside and exercising, uh, and you need someone to talk to, uh, you can email, uh, check, the Mill, check the Mills website. There should be some uh, resources there. And uh, if you need to, they can make an appointment and you, they can actually do teletherapy and, and give you a call and just have someone to check in with, okay? So those resources are still there for you. Please uh, use them. Okay, I gotta shut this down. Have a great day, guys, and um, I if I will see ya. Uh, the next screencast isn't scheduled till next Thursday, but uh, if I'm feeling bored, like early next week on Tuesday or something, I may just uh, open up a live stream and, and anybody can join and we can just talk about whatever. Okay, take care, um, be safe, stay inside, and uh, have fun. You guys can now talk about your gaming stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna transition out of here to get set up, and you guys have a good one. Have a good day. Thanks for coming. Bye.